Okay, if you pour some salt on the plate uh, and you look at it really carefully before you eat it, it's so delicious, you might notice that the crystals are actually uh, little cubes. They might not be cubes actually, but the faces will certainly be orthogonal. They'll be 90 degrees to each other. And that's exciting to me because you're observing something macroscopic, even with your naked eye, that is a manifestation of the organization at the atomic level. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. You're seeing these little cube cubes of, of salt, little single crystals of salt, and you're seeing that cube because the atoms themselves are arranged in a cubic fashion. It's beautiful. Anyway, let's take a look at that uh, right now. And um, one of the first things I just want to address, okay, we're going to look at the rock salt crystal structure, but it's not because I love salt so much. Uh, you know, in fact, I try not to eat too much salt. But <laughs> the reason that we look at uh, rock salt or sodium chloride as, as engineers is because there's many other uh, important ceramics that have the rock salt crystal structure. You know, magnesia, uh, magnesium oxide, um, iron oxide, uh, to name a few. There's others as well. Um, it's also a useful structure to um, you know, practice your ability seeing things in, in three dimensions. Um, but, but it is certainly a common crystal structure and that's why we're covering it. So what I want to do right now is go uh, get right into it and what we're going to do is we're going to position both anions and cations. And as I like to do, um, I like to draw the um, anion, that's the negative one, in blue because it's kind of a ooh, cold color, right, chilly. <laughs> and the, um, the, the red one is my cation, which is positive. Okay. Now I realize we have not yet discussed bonding um, and the, how in fact they get a, a positive and negative. I mean, it's through an electron transfer. You don't need to get hung up on that yet. We will cover that later. But at this point you can just appreciate that there's two types of element. They actually have a charge. That's what's holding them together. But we will cover all those details later. Right now I just want to look at their spatial arrangement. All right. So let's get right into it. And what we're going to do is um, for reasons we'll cover later, the anion is typically a little bit larger, okay? It's accepted an electron anyway, and uh, so it's usually a bit bigger. So for that reason, we usually put the, the big ones in first, and then we talk about the smaller ones fitting into the spaces between the big ones, okay? And so I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to put the um, anions into their positions, and you might recognize, you might see that this is actually kind of familiar, the, the anions are in these positions uh, that look to be, and you, you tell me, what does that look like? Okay, I've got all the corners, and then I've got these uh, face-centered positions, right? So these are the anions in FCC-type positions. Okay, now I say FCC type for a reason because the cations, which we're going to put into the spaces between the anions, can be big enough that they push the anions apart. So the anions do not necessarily touch, well, they don't touch the way they do for FCC. For FCC, they touch across the face diagonals, but for rock salt, uh, we're going to have the cation touching the nearest neighbor anions. So to understand that, let's put the, an uh, the cations on to this structure. And so we're going to put them into these edges. So right in the center of all the cube edges is where we're going to position our um, cations, okay, the positive ions. So there we go. We've got those ones. And then I'll just sketch in the uh, hidden ones here, the back edges, okay, and label those. These are the cations, but I'm not finished just yet, actually, and I did this on purpose because the, the stoichiometry, say if it's sodium and chlorine, should be one to one, right? But how many anions do we have? We've got an eighth, remember that's only one eighth of an atom inside this um, unit cell, one eighth of a sphere, times eight corners is one, plus the 
faces. There's a half of a sphere inside the unit cell times six faces, so that's three. You know, we've got four anions. Ah, whoops. Four anions. So we need to have four cations. And <clears throat> if you take a look here, you'll see that we have one quarter on each edge position, right? How, but how, how many are there? How many edges are there? There's four edges on the bottom, four edges on the top, and four holding the whole thing together. So that means 12. There's 12 edges. So there's only three cations. We're, we're missing one. What's going on? Where should that last one go? Um, and the answer to that question is that the last one goes right here in the very center. Okay? That one goes in the very center of the cube and it's not sliced up at all. So there's one there plus these three gives you four. And so our stoichiometry works out correctly. Last thing I need to show you is the direction that the atoms are touching one another. Okay, and as you might know I like to do, I like to draw with the yellow color here the direction that the atoms touch. So what happens is the cations touch their nearest neighbor anions and they touch along the edges. Okay, let me write that in. Touch along the edges for that direction. So if we had, for example, our orthogonal axes like this, x, y, and z, we say, well, they're touching along the x direction. That means that this, if we look at this central atom here, this one right in the very center, it would touch also the front and the back. Um, if the atoms touch, as we know they do, along this edge, well, that means that it's also going to touch to the right and the left this way, and finally, if it touches along you know, this vertical, it must also touch that way from the center. So now you can count the number of atoms that are touching any given cation, and we call that the coordination number. Okay, and the coordination number is one, two, three to the right, four to the left, five back, and six out in front. Coordination number equals six. So that is a real quick look at the rock salt crystal structure. Thanks a lot.